In this course, we will examine many different types of rotating equipment. However, the task will be a lot more easier if we begin our study by first focusing on the similarities of the equipment and then the specific differences. As an example, I have chosen to first present pumps, then compressors. As was just discussed, both pumps and compressors are driven types of equipment, and they do both move product. Regardless of the product phase or state, their functions are identical. In fact, both pumps and compressors move a fluid from one energy level to another. A pump moves an incompressible fluid, which is a liquid. However, a compressor moves a compressible fluid, which is a gas. And the volume of that gas changes with pressure, temperature and gas composition as we shall see further ahead. The principles of dynamic machines apply both to pumps and compressors. However, since gases are compressible, the volume flow rate and hence the gas velocity in a passage is affected. The same comments can be made concerning mechanical components. Just ask yourself, are the functions of the impeller, the shaft, the bearing and the mechanical seals the same? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. A bearing performs the same function whether it is in a pump, a compressor, a gearbox, a turbine or any other type of rotating equipment. Now, take a look at the following figure here. It shows how both performance and mechanical functions are similar regardless of the classification or type of equipment. As you proceed through this course, you will discover that positive displacement or dynamic performance principles will be the same regardless of the type of equipment, whether it is a pump, a compressor or a turbine. Also, the mechanical principles presented for bearings, mechanical seals and couplings will apply whether the component is in a pump, a turbine, a compressor or a gearbox. As stated in a previous video, the objective is to learn the functions of equipment and major components so that they can be effectively condition monitored to maximize site safety and reliability. Having defined the first classifications of equipment as depicted here, try to guess how many of these classifications are present in a pump unit or a compressor train. Well, the answer is all four. Regardless of the type of unit or train, a driven machine, a driver, a transmission device and auxiliary systems must always be present. When you are asked to inspect G300 or K100, you are actually inspecting G300 pump unit or K100 compressor train. Failure to recognize this fact will severely limit your troubleshooting scope and ability. Consider the following example. A call from the unit shift manager may state that the G300 discharge pressure is zero. So what are the possible causes? Well, a few are process change, pump wear, coupling failure, pump shaft failure, driver shaft failure, pump seal failure, process valve closed, or steam inlet valve closed, if the driver is a steam turbine. So, do you get the point? Well, what I want you to remember here and to understand is that the entire unit or train, all four machinery classifications must always be considered in rotating equipment during design, revamps, troubleshooting, and inspection. Before discussing specific facts concerning all the rotating equipment, some important concepts need to be presented. The environment or surroundings for any piece of rotating equipment play an important part in determining the availability of that particular item. 
The rotating equipment environment is the process unit in which the equipment is installed. The surroundings of the equipment will be defined earlier in the project, so proper design of process conditions, piping and foundations, selection of other components like drivers, transmission devices and auxiliaries, and proper specification of ambient conditions all must be considered. If any of these items are not taken into account, the end user of the equipment will be faced with a history of an unreliable process and will pay dearly in terms of lost product revenue. It is important to understand that the lifespan of rotating equipment is extremely long compared to the specification, design and installation phases. Take a look at the following figure. It represents a typical lifespan of rotating equipment. A typical installation will have a specification design and installation phase of only 10% of the total life of the process unit. And proper specification, design or installation will significantly impact the maintenance requirement, the maintenance cost and the availability of a particular piece of machinery. Now, the objectives of the end user of any type of rotating equipment, or in other words, your objectives, are shown here. You want maximum reliability, maximum product throughput, with of course, minimum operating costs. So, in order to maximize the profit, you must and have to meet these objectives. In order to achieve these objectives, you must play a significant part in the project during the specification and design phase and not only after the installation of the equipment in the field. Effective field maintenance starts with the specification phase of a project. Inadequate specifications in terms of equipment operating conditions, mechanical design, instrumentation and the location of the instrumentations will reduce equipment availability. Now, the definition of reliability is shown here. It is the amount of time the equipment operates in one year. You can calculate it easily using the following formula. It is equal to the operating hours per year divided by 8,700 hours, which represents the number of hours in a year. The availability, on the other hand, is the amount of time the equipment operates in one year minus the planet downtime. You can calculate it using the following formula. Recall here that good reliability and availability indexes are greater than 95%. Now, from these definitions, you can notice that reliability does not take into account planet downtime. Availability, on the other hand, considers planet downtime, including turnarounds. Both values are stated in percentage, and typical equipment availabilities when they are properly specified are 97% and plus. Availability directly affects the product revenue. Product revenue is the value obtained from the product produced in one day. For refineries, for example, the loss of revenue can exceed a million US dollar a day. This will occur if a critical piece of equipment is shut down. Remember, even though the unit may be down for a short period, the time necessary to bring the process back within specification may be significantly longer. It is very valuable for you to obtain the product revenue figure for the unit in which you are working. As it will be seen further ahead, this value can significantly influence your management in terms of decision making. It is important to understand that upset conditions with any piece of rotating equipment can occur in a very short period of time. In addition, the requirements for reliable operation, so a minimum of three years continuous run, will require enormous amount of equipment revolutions all on a very thin film of lubricating oil. Failure to maintain this film is one of the major reasons for reduced equipment availability. To better illustrate this and put things into perspective, let's take a look at the following figures. 
These figures represent a typical fact concerning a centrifugal compressor. A typical centrifugal compressor running at 6000 RPM rotates at 100 times per second. It also rotates 8,640,000 times per day. And now I'll let you do the math to figure out the revolution per year. And the answer is here. It's quite impressive, right? And all this is done on an oil film of less than one thousandth of an inch.